Hey guys, in this video, I'm going to teach you and walk you through all the tips, tools, steps, checklists for how to run a successful large Zoom webinar. How large? Well, you may be preparing for a meeting that's close to 100 people, maybe 500, I don't know, a thousand people. Recently, I concluded the moderation for a webinar that is up to 5,000 attendees. It blew my mind. And thanks to YouTube, this client actually found me as a result of my previous webinar meeting. Maybe after watching this one, you will want to check out the other video for some basics on Zoom webinar. When you have a really large Zoom webinar, well, there's a lot of pressure because things cannot go wrong. In my case, running and moderating the webinar for Women Leaders Association HR summit, every single person was a paid attendee. And on top of that, the people I was moderating for and interviewing one-on-one, -on -one, as well as hosting these panels were Steve Wozniak, co-founder of Apple, Barbara Corcoran, Shark from Shark Tank on ABC, John Mackey, the co-founder of Whole Foods, as well as Lisa Dennison, chairman of Sotheby's, and eight other prolific men, women as part of the uh, panels as well. The crazy thing was I wasn't originally hired as a moderator, but simply a Zoom operator. I think this is a critical and missing video here on YouTube for people who are running really large Zoom webinars. Our scenario was actually really complicated. Not only we had prolific guests, they were also coming in and out throughout the entire four hour webinar. Yes, guys, I needed my water bottle and my break and everything. I also had to follow a script. This was a very tightly run webinar, so I couldn't really go off script. It took me about five days to prepare for this whole thing. I could have easily used more time. Without further ado, please allow me to share with you everything I learned during the session. Please watch till the end. I'm going to share the number one tip I have for you as an event organizer, a moderator, if you're running a huge meeting with people you love, admire. The last tip has everything to do with mindset and that's gonna help you tremendously. Look, one key thing I'm going to cover in this video is a combination of tech and non-tech, meaning the things you must know, you should know, like the back of your hand for Zoom webinar. There's also this whole other category here that has nothing to do with technology. And that is super important as well for you to conduct and look very professional running the event. So if if you're running a meeting similar to that, a large meeting with speakers and guests coming in and out. So what you want to do is have a very simple and very controlled setting for that. Now, what I did is I invited myself a few times, uh, including my mom's name here. And as you can see, I have myself face world media as attendee too. I recommend that you choose something called follow hosts view. Since I'm facilitating and moderating the session, I'm opening, closing, I'm introducing guests as well. I will start with just a speaker view. And then as I'm getting inviting guests into the conversations with me, what I will do is I'll go to the three dots over here and I choose add spotlight. Remember that spotlight is an effort to make this person seen and this view seen for everyone not just yourself. And depending on your screen resolution, you can resize it and then change the orientation. And welcome to the back of my head as I'm recording this. And this is the best view. The reason why you're unable to use just the speaker or just the gallery view here for attendee is because people are coming in and out, especially when there are panelists uh, arriving without knowing where they are with a live session, um, what you don't want to do is to enable gallery because they'll be dropped into the gallery view immediately, especially if they have their video and microphone turned on. Using Spotlight will give you the highest customizable view. You know, you can choose three people, five people, whatever, whoever you want to have on the screen. So if you want to remove people from Spotlight, all you have to do is click on the three dots and remove Spotlight. You can also do it over here under participants remove spotlight. So again, remember all the attendees are following your view, following the host view. So if you want to bring somebody back into the spotlight, make sure you do that. I do recommend for larger webinars, you should enable a live transcript. And this way people with hearing impairments, uh, special needs, they're able to actually turn it on and off on their own. So I have a separate video for this. Come check it out. It is very useful to know that you have control over whether you want to show subtitles such as this, where you can turn it off because all the attendees have the option to turn it on and off on their own. You just want to make sure that when you click on the big button, live transcript, that you did not disable 
auto transcription. This is a very large meeting. Now it really depends. You want to have a conversation with the event organizer. I personally recommend to mute panelists upon entry because you don't know they might hit the microphone and in which case the sound will transmit into the meeting, right? Um, however, with spotlight feature, you don't have to worry about their faces showing up all of a sudden because we're only showing people being spotlighted, but their voice can still be distracting. I would not recommend you play the join and leave sound if it's a busy meeting. Under here, allow panelists to, yes, unmute themselves, rename themselves, start their video. This is important. If they're meant to start their video and to join you in an interview, you want to make sure that this is selected. Otherwise, they will not be able to do that. Lastly, uh, allow attendees to do these things. Um, we usually have them turned off for meetings over 100 people. It is maybe up to 500. Beyond that, you will not be able to address people's questions. Therefore, it is really important to have people working in operations, helping you monitor and moderate the session. Let's talk about the chat features real quick. When you have a big meeting, you're able to enable or disable chat feature from within the meeting, but you also have the option to actually set it on zoom.us under account management. By the way, there's a lot more I can say about running a really big meeting. I think anything that's over the size of even two to 300 people as webinars can get pretty chaotic. So you want to know your audience. Uh, also remember to work with your IT team at that size of a meeting. You want to make sure that your IT team knows that, let's say a single attendee cannot just forward his or her invite to a thousand other people. You Zoom charges a pretty significant fee once you go over their 100 people threshold. Uh, that applies to whether it's a regular Zoom meeting or a webinar. Additional tips to keep a longer meeting in check and on time, you want to have a time keeper or time tracker, a person uh, you can reach out to, to text you, to give you some sort of notification. Also for longer meetings, sometimes it's a good idea to have timers built in. So I have a link in description for you to download some of our timers, but you can also customize them as well. For example, for your organization or for your meeting, prepare slides in case you need to take a break, uh, whether it's a water break or a restroom break, you want to have these assets in place. Lastly, unrelated to technical stuff. You want to have your agenda. If there's a script, for example, organized in a Google doc, I also tend to want to print them out as well, just in case, you know, I lose track of it. And also for meetings that are pretty complex, I tend to have a pen in hand and then make sure I mark things down. I check things off as we move along. Other non-technical issues I would like to recommend if you are facilitating or moderating, make sure you get in touch with your client ahead of time. You might need to have check-ins two to three times to make sure can you alter the questions, how you go about transitions, you know, who's opening and closing the sessions, little details as they come up, there's nothing silly. You want to align and set expectations. For example, as I'm moderating this session with a lot of very prolific guests, I actually check in with my clients to make sure, Hey, do you want me to even be on screen as a moderator? Or do you want me to fade into the background? So these are all very candid questions that you should be asking. There's also a sound check element when it comes to all of this. If you know, that uh, if your gardener, your lawn guys are going to show up, you might want to text them uh, a week before or the day before, even the day off to make sure that they don't show up by your window with these really loud machines. However, with that said, I have some good news. I have a video, separate video on in a fantastic software called Crisp. Come check it out. It is something that will help you significantly, even if it's a smaller Zoom meeting. Crisp is able to remove background sounds almost completely. It can be very jarring sounds, not just quiet background noise. So definitely check it out. It helped me tremendously. It is getting pretty hot right now into the summer. A lot of us, uh, I know some of my friends living in New York have these really loud fans and ACs in their rooms. Do not overlook that sound because that can literally take over your Zoom meeting. Uh, when other people are talking because of your background noise can cut their voices in and out. You want to avoid that. If you're not sure, uh, simply record yourself in a solo meeting just like this in your Zoom and just hit record and see what happens. During your recorded Zoom meeting, you can just simply turn on a fan, your AC, and you can hear it out. And then you can compare and contrast with using Crisp. Make sure you have a glass of water, maybe a bottle of water if it's a longer meeting, and also clean up your desk. You will really appreciate having a very clean environment when the meeting runs long, when the meeting is complicated, and you have to move things around, having pens ready. The last thing you want to see are your hard drives in a messy places and, you know, all these things on your 
desks that don't serve you for the duration of the meeting. Lastly, I would say that one practice related to Zoom webinars, especially if you're new, you don't have a lot of help, you're not quite sure what you're doing, then make sure you have a secondary device, a monitoring device that you can set aside, whether it's a, a iPad or an iPhone or maybe another laptop. I do like the idea of a smaller devices so I can actually, you know, it doesn't take up a whole lot of space to see what other people are seeing. Uh, the backup device means that that device should enter the meeting as an attendee even while you're being a host or co-host or a panelist. Before I forget, I did start a service to help people like yourself, companies to run better Zoom meetings and webinars. I'm happy to answer any Tata questions too afraid to ask. I help people one-on-one -on -one, in small groups, but also in large corporate settings. Check out in the link below to see how we can work one-on-one. -on -one. Look forward to hearing from you. Welcome back guys. I'm so glad you watched the video as promised. I have some final tips. Number one is what if power goes out? These are very scary scenarios. You want to make sure that you coordinate with your team, having a moderator as a backup, somebody who understands the scripts, ready to go, knows everything about the context about the event. What if you lose the internet? Your power is back up, your machine is fully charged. Number one, you can use your mobile phone or your 4G, 5G connected uh, iPad or tablet devices to also join the Zoom meeting. You wanna make sure you have all the Zoom details ready at hand. It's not something you wanna look up to an older invite, have the Zoom details, including the passwords ready to go. You can then use the 4G on your mobile devices or you can tether it and use it on a laptop. This is something you want to run the test and check prior to running the webinar. Also, do not assume that your device is going to be fully charged or keep the charge. This is something that I purchased on Amazon. I'll keep all the links below. Something I can just plug my phone right in. It's one piece and I'll keep my phone charged. Obviously, this is kind of an old school rechargeable battery. Make sure you have something like this fully charged with a USB cable ready to go for your devices. In terms of my Mac laptop, I just keep that fully charged prior to the event. Did I end up using any of this? No, but it was peace of mind, not only for me, but for any professional moderator. The next tip is actually quite critical as well. Keeping a line of communication with your team. Uh, I'm referring to your operations team, your internal team, your tech team, whoever is staying with you on this webinar, your organizers, you want to make sure to have a way to communicate with them. Maybe it's just as old fashioned as a group chat on your phone. Uh, maybe you're using WhatsApp, something like that. Or in my case, my team decided to use Google Chat. It's not something I use on a regular basis, but I'm really glad that that's what my client used and I was able to tap into that earlier on. You do not wanna use private chats and things like that within Zoom because you don't know how the export is gonna work. You also don't want to accidentally text any internal messages to showcase to everybody else, including you know panelists as well as attendees. Here comes the final tip, which is something I thought of right there on the spot at this meeting. The moment I saw Steve Wozniak, I definitely got a little nervous. There was no surprise that he was gonna be there. Then as soon as I open up the meeting, I try to sound friendly, you know, I had a script, which I practiced for days. But then I saw the number, you know, within Zoom webinar as well as Zoom meetings, you can see the number of attendees popping in. It just went from 50, 100, 200, 500, 1000. At that point, I stopped looking. I actually did not even hover over with my mouse. Instead, I focused on my conversation with Steve, with Barbara, with John, one-on-one. -on -one. I pretended that the world didn't exist. I pretended that none of the attendees existed. I, I thank them for joining the meeting, but I had my entire focal point on the guests I was moderating for, I was interviewing. So that's my number one tip, which I kept all the way till the end. For you, it's the same thing. Perhaps you are a content creator going live on certain channels and you can see people coming in. Yes, you wanna acknowledge them, but at the end of the day, especially if you're feeling nervous, when you feel like there's a really large audience and some of them may not know you well, may not even be there for you, that's one trick I learned from the Atherton twins from Cirque du Soleil. When they go on stage facing hundreds and sometimes thousands of people, they look into the audience and they select one person and that night they're gonna perform for that one person. I love this community. Thank you so much for watching. If you find this helpful, please consider sharing this video with one friend, colleague. That would truly help me tremendously.